The topic for this video is Huntington disease. And Huntington disease is a neurologic disorder. And it is um, a disorder that occurs during middle age. Uh, usually the onset is uh, between 30 and 40 years of age. And it is a genetically inherited disorder. And that genetic uh, uh, mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant. Uh, remember that because that's commonly tested. What uh, is being affected in Huntington's? It is a part of the brain known as the caudate nucleus. And that's important to remember. And it atrophies. And why does it atrophy? What's going on here? Well, what's happening is you have a gene mutation. And that gene mutation uh, is what Hunt Huntington's disease results from. And that gene mutation causes ab abnormal repetition of uh, a DNA sequence. Very important to remember. And what DNA sequence? CAG. So you have CAG, CAG onward. And that abnormal repetition uh, results in a gene product called Huntington. Huntington is a protein and this protein which is the result of these abnormal repetitions of CAG CAG is what does the damage. It, what happens is this Huntington protein accumulates in the neurons in the brain and leads to the damage. Now there's a very important uh, uh, genetic uh, concept um, that's known as anticipation and very important to remember this what is anticipation it's, it's it's on licensing exams all the time and I'll explain what it is because a Huntington's disease is a genetic disorder is passed on from generation to generation sometimes what can happen is that with each successive generation the disease can become more severe and the reason it becomes more severe with successive generations is because the number of CAG repeats increases. So the more CAG repeats, the earlier the onset of the disease and the more severe the disease. And that um, concept is known as anticipation. So remember that. All right, well now let's get into the symptoms of uh, Huntington's. So what happens? What kind of symptoms is the person going to present with? Well, we talked about how, on average, the age of onset is about 30 to 5 to 40, so pretty young. The predominant uh, uh, symptoms include neurologic symptoms like dementia. A person can also suffer from depression. Uh, the person can also become uh, very um, apathetic, just doesn't have any energy, you know. Irritability. And something known as anhedonia. If you remember, what is this? This anhedonia, by definition, is the person loses uh, pleasure in things that used to bring the person pleasure. So anything that they used to enjoy, they no longer enjoy it anymore. The person can also present with antisocial behavior. So it's a deterioration, as you can see, um, of a psychiatric uh, 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 format. Another component to the symptomatology is uh, abnormal movements. That's another part of uh, Huntington's. And what movements are we talking about? Well, we're talking about chorea. Huntington's chorea, remember that term. We're talking about tics, and we're talking about myoclonic jerks. And these are some of the abnormal movements that can appear. This disease is progressive, and eventually a uh, person can die within about 13 to 15 years of the onset of the uh, uh, disease. So how do you diagnose it? Well, the diagnosis of um, uh, Huntington's involves three things. The first thing is, of course, the presentation, the clinical evaluation, uh, clinical presentation of their symptoms and then their uh, you know, abnormal movements that we just talked about. The second one is the genetic testing. And remember, that's the the, the DNA sequence, uh, the CAG repeats, remember I mentioned that a bit earlier. And then the, f the third part is the neuroimaging. The neuroimaging 
whether it's a CT or MRI, will show the um, atrophy in the caudate nucleus of the brain. And uh, that's a very important um, aspect of the uh, neuroimaging. All right, so how do you treat it? Well, unfortunately, there's no cure for Huntington, so the treatment is really uh, supportive. And what I mean by supportive, uh, for those of you just starting out, uh, it doesn't mean like, you know, you hold their hand and you say, oh, it's okay. A supportive therapy really is referring to managing the symptomatology. So as we um, mentioned earlier, uh, the agitation and some of the psychiatric abnormalities are managed with antipsychotics. Um, so for example, medications like haloperidol um, and several others. Uh, antidepressants are used to manage the depression component. The family also, uh, part of the treatment, I guess, is to do genetic testing on the relatives uh, because it's an autosomal dis uh, dominant disorder. So that's part of, encompasses part of the management plan. And really, unfortunately, that's uh, the extent of it. Now there are new therapies under uh, you know research, but as far as it stands now, there really is no cure. It's really just a management of the symptomatology. So we're going to talk about uh, two clinical vignettes, and here we go. 37-year-old man, so quite young, is referred to a psychiatrist because of erratic behavior. The man had been adopted in infancy, so his family history is not known. Over the next year, he develops uncontrollable erratic movements such that attempts to pick up a cup or use a pencil produce sudden uncontrolled lurches. When he tries to walk, he staggers, thrusts, and abruptly changes direction. Eventually, with disease progression, he develops increased rigidity and, unable, and is unable to move, and finally dies 10 years after the onset of symptoms. Which of the following changes would most likely be seen on examination of his brain at autopsy? What they're describing here is Huntington's chorea, um, and um, that's a typical clinical presentation. And if you remember, the brain pathology in the brain involves the caudate nucleus, which is right here. And it's the caudate nucleus that atrophies in Huntington's chorea, in Huntington's disease, of course. The next one, um, the wife of a 49-year-old male patient uh, brings him to the emergency room and says that his memory has progressively gotten worse over the last several years. She also says that his personality has been changing. The physician notes abnormal writhing movements of the man's limbs and hyperreactive reflexes. MRI reveals a loss of volume in the neostriatum and cortex. This disease is inherited via. Um, well, this is again talking about Huntington's and you know as you can see unfortunately there isn't much information in the clinical vignette but if you learn a little bit more about uh, clinical vignettes you'll quickly come to the conclusion that oftentimes they don't give you uh, all the information this sort of up to you um, if you can uh, remember the Huntington's disease is inherited in the autosomal dominant then that will help you um, uh, solve this question. Now what they're talked about in the um, uh, clinical vignette is um, the writhing movements, the progressive dementia, which is his memory loss, and then they touch a little bit on his, uh, uh, his behavioral disorders. So those are the, some of the types of clinical vignettes about Huntington disease that you can uh, expect on licensing exams.